Hey guys, welcome to this presentation for the Internet of Things course. My name is Prince Songwa and my partner Richard Basu. Uh, hi guys, so um, <clears throat> Prince, Prince will be covering the first part and I'll be covering the second part of the presentation. And um, due to, so that we can maximize the screen space, we will stop showing our faces at the end of the slide. Thank you. Okay. So our presentation is going to use the following outline. Uh, but first, we would like to mention that uh, most of the information which is presented here comes from a paper which was written by the authors uh, that you can see here on the screen. Uh, IoT is um, just a network of interconnected devices. Uh, you can think of um, home appliances, uh, smartphones, uh, smart vehicles. And it's a concept which was introduced in 1999 by Kevin Ashton. Uh, for this presentation, we chose the topic uh, applications and management, uh, where we focused on the management of devices uh, in an efficient way. And uh, we focused uh, deeper into the device group management for constrained networks. So. Um, IoT devices are interconnected in constrained networks, uh, which are networks with low throughput and uh, high packet rates. Sorry, high packet loss rate. So um, these devices have constraints um, such as memory and power. So it's important to uh, manage them in such a way that these uh, constraints are minimized. So um, first, before we introduce the problem, uh, we would like to mention some references uh, to the lecture notes. So we see that in the lecture we covered uh, the styles, various architecture styles which are relevant to IoT, and this will be covered as well in this uh, topic, where we talk about uh, the REST architecture. So uh, also in the slide we talked about the CoAP protocol and um, the solution that we are going to present here is largely based on the co-op protocol uh, and finally we talked about the lightweight m2m protocol also during the lectures with professor lukin um, we are going to discuss that protocol here as well um, next we we'll just talk about some basic uh, uh, refreshments of these uh, protocols First, the CoAP protocol uh, is based on the RESTful uh, architecture. And we know that uh, REST supports uh, four main uh, operations, um, the GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. So REST in itself means uh, representational state transfer, and uh, it enables the transfer of resources such as files, variables, and devices. And these resources can be manipulated by clients. Um, so the CoAP protocol, uh, CoAP stands for Constraints Application Protocol, <clears throat> and it's very efficient in uh, the management of uh, devices in constraints networks. So this protocol has uh, the possibility to um, be extended to provide uh, communication between devices, group communications. So um, the first extension is the CoAP proxy, which maps request to uh, which map HTTP request to responses. Uh, so the first extension is the CoAP proxy, which maps HTTP request to CoAP request, and it also supports uh, multicasting and grouping. The second extension is the observation of resources. Um, so it, the server has the possibility to monitor clients and obtain uh, updates on resources from those clients over a period of time. Next, we go to the lightweight end-to-end -end protocol, uh, which was developed by the Open uh, Mobile Alliance. It is also based on uh, REST, uh, and uh, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, client server um, architecture so the lightweight m2m protocol um, 
has operations such as read, write, and execute. And uh, resources are uh, represented in the form of uh, JSON, which is uh, JavaScript object notation, and also type and value. Um, yeah, but now we talk about a problem, which is the management of devices in constrained networks. So we see that uh, the lightweight M2M protocol uh, only specifies a client to server communication. So the main problem is how we can manage device groups in constrained networks. The lightweight M2M protocol is designed to use a one-to-one -one communication flow, but it doesn't contain specifications uh, for group communications. And this one-to-one -one communication flow um, uh, creates um, a lot of energy consumption and a lot a high load of messaging to the server. So we need to find a way to minimize the messaging load to the server and also uh, yeah, reduce the energy consumption. So a solution which will be proposed later on uh, will be measured by uh, how many bytes are returned in the interaction between the client and the server. So if we can present a solution which returns uh, fewer bytes uh, for group communications, then it will be more advantageous than having a lot of bytes in one-to-one -one communications between the client and the server. So our solution is, uh, is a proxy, lightweight M2M proxy. And imagine the regular client-server uh, interactions, and then a proxy is introduced uh, in between for one client. But then the solution is about uh, managing group devices. So uh, it involves creating a group object which contains all these devices, and there's an interaction between the server and the clients as a group through the proxy. So this proxy uh, is advantageous in the sense that it reduces the number of bytes sent to the server and avoids retransmissions from the client to the server. So um, if a server makes a request to the proxy, the proxy intends makes the request to the clients and it caches the responses from the clients and only returns those responses to the proxy on demand. So this avoids a lot of retransmissions from the client and the server, and also yeah, it reduces the number of bytes which are sent to the server, thereby saving energy and reducing uh, messaging. This proxy includes uh, uh, both client and server functionality, and most importantly, it contains uh, extensions for group management, as we will show you in the later slides. So the proxy has uh, four group management objects. And uh, so we have the group object, which is used for the creation and management of groups. Then uh, the registration policy object, which allows uh, the management of group of clients following a, a specific policy. Then the group observe object, which allows uh, uh, the proxy to observe client resources belonging to the same group. Then we have the proxy devices object, which uh, allows the proxy to obtain information from uh, the clients and to forward the uh, commands to the clients connected to the proxy. Uh, next, we will talk about the evaluation of this solution. So from these four objects, uh, two of the object will be used to evaluate the solution, namely the group object and the group observe object. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the solution will be evaluated by the number of bytes which are returned uh, to the server in the interactions between the server and the client. So now uh, my partner uh, Richard is going to take care of the second part, which are the various scenarios for evaluating this solution. start with the evaluation of the scenarios. The two scenarios that we will consider are the server proxy client setup and the server client setup. Within the server proxy client setup, we have two scenarios once again. The first is one client in group object and the second is seven clients in the group object. 
within the server client setup we have two scenarios the first is one client and a server the second is seven clients however lightweight m2m is designed to use a one to one communication flow so if there are seven clients there would there would be one server but it would communicate only one at a time we move to the group object scenario in which there is a server and a client in this case the lw m2m server sends a request to the client which is 57 bytes and the client gives an acknowledgement back to the server which is 60 bytes in the next scenario in the next scenario we have seven clients when the lw m2m server sends a request of 57 bytes the client replies with an acknowledgement of 60 multiplied by 7 which is 420 bytes the next scenario that we consider is the server proxy client scenario in this there is one client the lightweight m2m server sends a request to the proxy with 57 bytes and the proxy replies with an acknowledgement of 60 bytes the proxy requests the values from the client and caches the value for use later and when the server requests these values from the proxy it is 57 bytes and the proxy replies with 136 bytes to the server we now consider the case in which there are seven clients in a group the lightweight m2m server sends a request to the proxy with 57 bytes and the proxy replies with an acknowledgement of 60 bytes <clears throat> the proxy gains the values from the various clients and caches the value for get values for future use and when the lightweight m2m server sends a request to the proxy worth 57 bytes it replies with 405 bytes because seven clients are members of the group we now consider the group observe scenario in which there is a server and a client at first so the server sends a request to the client which is worth 57 bytes and the client sends an acknowledgement back worth 60 bytes after the resource is modified by the client the client sends a message to the server in 55 bytes however for two clients it's 55 into 2 which is 110 bytes and for three clients it's 55 into 3 which is 165 bytes we now consider the group observe scenario in which there is a server a client and a proxy the server sends a request indicating member resource function to observe to the proxy the proxy communicates this to the respective client and sends the new value of the updated resource the new value of the updated resource is sent by the client to the proxy when the server requests observed values of the group members to the proxy the proxy responds with an aggregated acknowledgement of 50 bytes for one client member for two clients it's 59 bytes and for three clients the proxy responds with 67 bytes while concluding we see that when the group object has only one member the server receives more bytes of 136 from the proxy than in the case of the client server request which was only 60 bytes we also see that when the group object has seven members the server receives less bytes from the proxy 405 then in the case of the client server request which was 420 bytes as you can see from the graph as the number of lw m2m clients increases without the proxy then oh, in the case in the case of without an lw m2m proxy as the number of clients increases the, the bytes received by the lw m2m server also increases so basically as we had mentioned in our problem statement earlier <clears throat> uh the problem was that uh there is higher energy consumption when there is a higher load so because of the proxy you can see that you have minimized the message load message load to the lw m2m server and hence the energy consumption also the lw m2m proxy can group devices together cache messages from devices and send aggregated messages to the server we'd now like to talk about the challenges to build a group communication structure the first challenge is group discovery which is the capability to discover a group or members of a group the second challenge 
is retrieving information from group properties, which basically means retrieving information of the resources available in a group. The third is create and removing a group. The fourth is adding, removing, and re remunerating group members. The fifth challenge is operation reliability. This basically means that the application is able to select reliable or unreliable group communication. The next challenge is accessing control primitives. Basically, authorized entities are allowed to manage and perform operations within the groups. The last challenge is robust group management. This functionality considers failure or sleeping node situations. That's all. Thank you.